but with this thing with the Japan, I don't think it was cool, but I do think it was interesting. It was a wild ass dream, dude. It was not sleeping for a month is crazy. It is a very, very interesting um, life experience. So I'm stoked on it in, on the sense that it was like, I did it. I'm not dead. I, I got through it. I did not have to stay there for a year. I think that would have been insane. I would have lost my mind. But to be able to like have appreciation now, the second I got out, dude, that's when I started doing the GoPro. Well, we're back. Back with another episode of the Not Snowboarding Podcast. If you ever listen to the Nine Club Skateboarding Podcast, you'll know that was my best Chris Roberts imitation. This episode and every episode is brought to you by Shred Soles Skateboarding and Snowboarding Insoles. We just launched the new snowboard boot bag with Changing Mat, and it's been really well received. Here's what people are saying. Tom A. says, This bag is awesome. I wear a size 13 boot, and there's almost enough room for two pairs. The side pockets are perfect for chargers, towels, candy, chips, basically anything else you bring along for a day on the mountain. There's plenty of room for everything you need, yet very compact when closed up, which keeps your vehicle extremely organized. It's got very rugged construction, and the built-in changing mat is an added cherry on top. The price is the best part. Everything a $100 boot locker has to offer for less than half of the price. Thanks, Tom. This next review is from someone named Amy. She says, It was always such a mess throwing my boots in the back of mine or my friend's car at the end of the day after riding and not wanting to get mud everywhere. Now I don't have to worry about that, and I can even stand on the door to the bag so my feet don't get all munged up when changing. Thanks for the awesome bag, Shred Souls. Thank you, Amy. If you want to scoop up a snowboard boot bag of your own, go to www.shredsouls.com and use the discount code BANANA for 10% off your entire order for a limited time. In other Shred Souls news, production is almost finished on the brand new snowboarding insoles. Uh, We're looking forward to have them available in six to seven weeks. And we're also getting really close to a long-time goal of creating the perfect snowboarding sock. More on that in the near future. So Nick Giesen. I was first introduced to Nick and his twin brother Chris by my friend Justin Majeski, who was filming them in the Tahoe area about six years ago. Justin told me, you have to sponsor these dudes. They're winning every contest out here. Since then, Nick and I have stayed in touch as he's been a team rider for Shred Souls, but um, most of our communication has been over the internet or via text. We'd occasionally get to talk a bit in person if uh, he was home at Seven Springs and our paths happened to cross, but I didn't really get to know Nick well until I drove across country with him last fall. We get into that road trip, his relationship with his twin brother, the secret to Instagram success in snowboarding, and a very sobering story about being jailed in Japan for 27 days. As a quick note, as you'll hear at the start of the podcast, this was recorded during the first ever podcast camp at Seven Springs, or TNSP camp as we're calling it uh, moving forward. If you have interest in attending next year's podcast camp, please listen to the end of the episode for more info. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. So let's let's go around the room here and just um, say kind of who you are. So we have a little introduction for everyone for the TNSP Camp podcast. We'll start with you, Quentin. I'm Quentin. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Very right strong on. start. It's a, it's on the spot, man. I, I that's feel good. it. Yeah, no yeah, worries. Yeah. We'll go to your right with Ian. Hey guys, I'm Ian Macy. Um, here at Seven Springs for the Not Snowboarding Podcast. We're pretty hyped to have a big crew up here. The weather isn't the best, but we're making do with the winter that we've had. we still got sick parks. And uh, pretty hyped to be in the room with all these guys tonight. It's a good time. Stoked to have you, dude. Nick, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Uh, Nick Eason, just your average snowboard bum. <laughs> Cruising coast to coast and uh, decided to stop in here in Pennsylvania. And uh, so to be here. Cool. Jump back before we go to Alex. Go to David. All right, David from Michigan. Uh, second time down in the Springs. I came down to see you guys Nick, last year. Um, Snow was a little better then. A little bit better, not not <laughs> much. But yeah, so we're coming back for round two and trying to make the best of it. Cool. Who's got a mouthful of pie over there on the couch? Mm. 
<laughs> I'm John. I'm from uh, close by in the Pennsylvania woods, and I came for the free pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Zach. I'm from Michigan. Uh, it's nice to actually see some snow. So, <laughs> yeah. for lack thereof. I'm Carissa. I'm also from Michigan, and I'm one of the girls. Bring it in strong. Yes. <laughs> Alex? Uh, I'm Alex. I'm from Frederick, Maryland. Uh, just super psyched to be here and snowboarding. Deej. What's up? My name is DJ, and uh, my truck is still stuck at Acetine. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he got stuck <laughs> surfing two weeks ago and we've been giving him shit ever since oh. he got stuck on the beach <laughs> Everybody was like, for like 10 minutes stuck. <laughs> my truck stuck. Brad who are you I am Brad I'm from Michigan I'm having a great time at the Bible retreat this weekend <laughs> um, it's fun to be out here and uh, if you're trying to find me on the internet you can't I'm the only person on the list without an ant tag on the list. I don't think that's totally true. I think you have one oh, picture. Oh, I saw it on the fridge. It I think you have one picture. Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was yours or not. You have one picture, don't you? Probably. Okay. But you can't find me, though. You can find other other information about you is on the internet, but I won't... Uh, but I unless, you want, unless you want to get, put in a plug for... No, I, no, I like being that, that person who's like, I can't find him. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Kayla? Um, I'm Kayla. I'm from Liberty Mountain. <laughs> That's my home mountain, too. Been there Mike? once? Yeah. It's a good Sorry, time. First time I ever did an underflip. Really? Yeah, did you probably. get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I almost got hurt, probably, but I didn't get in trouble, though. Now, are yeah, you talking fine. about, like, Liberty University or, like, Liberty... Uh, like, Liberty... Ski of Liberty. Okay, cool. Is that what you guys are Like real snow. Yeah. Yeah. Right, real, real snow. Real, 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 like, yep. real yep. fake snow. I went there with Jeremy last year. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So was Nate wanted to have him on the podcast. Who? Uh, Def Jam? Yeah. Where is Def Jam? Does sign language cross over to podcast? <laughs> You're fired right now. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> you just, Man, you got to do you a, just a, a fact check. Yeah, dude, that would actually have been great to have at least Dave... You yeah, know, for he's sure. got some interesting yeah. perspective, especially of my snowboarding. So, well, yeah. kind of cool. We'll we'll, um, we'll do one with Dave at some point. I've talked to him about it before. For sure, Mike. What's up, dude? Uh, Mike, also from Ski Liberty. Just trying to make it three days without eating shit this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I've already blown that within like the first five minutes. <laughs> I have to. That's how I get. That's how I get the jitters out. I intentionally take a, a loving slam, and I always thank snowboarding for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Jay, also from Ski Liberty, and uh, this is actually my first time ever up at Springs, so uh, definitely stoked to be here, see all, especially all the park features. Yeah, and Jake's oh, yeah. filming a lot of this for us, so thanks, dude. Who are you? Who are you? How much time do you have? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> Sitting here with AJ, and then we've got my wife Colleen and my dog Raina running around here too. And this, hey. is, this is the first the Not Snowboarding Podcast camp, and we've had some like challenging conditions. And I, I can't thank you guys enough. I know I said it earlier at um, dinner, but I, I would have considered backing out if I had looked at the webcam. And you guys are all here, so that says a lot. Surf's up, <laughs> the surf and, is and up. the surf is up. So for sure, I had a really good pipe day. Yeah. One of the better pipe days. Mm. This is my second pipe day of the season. Boreal hasn't really had it. I mean, we had like a stunt ditch. You could sneak into that. That was old school, dude. Did you see Chris Roach going through and doing those nose waters? No. What are you been doing in park crew? That's <laughs> all I would do is sit there and just wait for Roach to come by and just say like, all right, whatever he does, I'm going to do in that hand dug mini pipe. You know, it's like, I saw you like Crippler. Yeah, there was a really good spot. And then you like to go Helka surfed it and then Ollie ooped. Yeah, it would have been sick to do Crippler. Crippler. Double that crippler. Was, yeah, real quick, like girl surfy. But a lot, well, a lot of kids have been just jumping off the lift into the half pipe this year. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because you had that much there's snow. Some, oh, it's yeah, it's pretty can, high. Yeah, there's a couple spots where you'll you'll hit the lift. Um, wow. Actually, yeah, on the left jump, the first jump, I hit the. You know, there's like a little pocket, and I, I did a method and was able to touch that. 
left lift while it was passing. Oh, <laughs> while going back down. <laughs> so Let's it's, try hopping on. Which I, I was thinking about at least getting a grab, you know? If I got a grab on it and then didn't hang on too long because it gets high quick. But yeah. It's just that much snow. Um, that's what I was telling people. They're like, why are you back on the east? And I'm like, I mean... It's cool to see that much snow. It's almost to a point where it's dangerous and it's, uh, there's so much of it. Like you can't even go snowboarding. You're spending eight hours of the day digging out and AJ, you've seen it. it oh, I've been digging. Dude. You've been digging probably more than anybody. I've yeah. really given up, but, uh, I mean, there was, I, I, obviously I'm here. So. Yeah. There were, I mean, there was days like I saw the backcountry thing was like just black. It All black. Like, do not go out. You yeah. will die. Like the black rose of death. Yeah. Yeah, don't you do not go out into the back. You don't. That's it's so dangerous that if like you, everything on your house will slide. If you're mm-hmm. in your backyard, it's really really dangerous because uh, of eight feet of snow packed down, a couple thousand pounds on the top of a roof that falls yeah, on yeah, you. There is it. no chance. It's not like you're getting dug out of an avalanche. You know, yeah. it's a lot more impactful. So it's it's kind of funny to talk about it, but it also is like a very serious thing to be aware that. It has kind of been dangerous with all that moisture out there. So, are they doing av- avalanche yet. safety courses for homeowners yet? Honestly, maybe renters. They, it's well, they <laughs> yeah. honestly, it's just to the point where it, it's backyard beacon. It needs to be <laughs> mentioned on the news. Do not step outside. You know, be careful of, of and mindful of things that are above you. The trees that are around you are fifty feet. If they have a couple pounds of ice on them, yeah. I thought yeah. Incline had a like the the town had an avalanche warning for a couple of days. Oh, for sure. I yeah, think, like, yeah, I can see that for sure. Do you yeah. live in Incline? Or you live in Kings Beach? No, I did uh, did did three or four years in Incline. Oh, you live in Donner Lake. I no, I did last year in Donner oh. Lake with Armin and those guys, yeah. and then I decided to kind of free ball it and uh, decide to like the last week when I was driving across the country with Nate in October to pick it. And I talked to my friend, Jeff Sponzo and he has a sp- yeah. uh, spot near, uh, Watson Lake above King, like North star and Kings beach, you know? Okay. So which is that the house they filmed the Migos video? Yeah. That's the, that's the t-shirt, t-shirt 17, video. Same, same color t-shirt. 17, same five, color same color t-shirt. t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I was with, uh, my girlfriend, she, we were in San Francisco. So we ended up getting there right at the end of the, the shoot and everything. Yeah. But it was, I was sitting there, I was like, God, do I really want to bring her into all this? She's coming from Virginia, you know? So I'm like, do you really want to come in here with like 10 Escalades, all like the whole Migos, all their crew, all the big booty, uh, big booty women that they, they brought with them. Yeah. You know? So it was, a, it went, the way Jeff described it was it went from like, you know, I mean, our house, you know, normal spot to normal Tahoe, uh, hideaway to a fucking, uh, trap house to a trap house dude to all the neighbors were all the neighbors were a little bit bummed something because there was i mean these these guys i mean mtv like yeah. for one day yeah. they shot that whole video they do this yeah. whole crazy thing and i'm like you know so interesting which being privy to your decision making process to yeah. that was super interesting for me because i you know you'd You'd have a phone call oh, with somebody. Right. I, was, I was stressing about it with yeah. you the whole drive. I'm so yeah. glad you were with but me. Then, but then you'd, the you'd like bounce it off of me. And then I'd think for me, like, okay, that's all of the conversation I'm going to have. And I'm going right. to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And then you'd get a phone call from somebody else. And then mm-hmm. you'd like call a family member, like phone a friend. And then you bounce it off of me again. But you have this new angle. And you really have a – I'm just like – quick decision like let's get it done but that's not the best way to live your life necessarily it's going to be a huge impact and it was yeah. so interesting for me to sit and just kind of hear and watch your decision and it's funny process. to see now two you know a handful of months later four months later to how see it played how out. it played out and how it has benefited you know and you can never foresee the future it's a very hard thing that we all wish we could potentially see you know what's good for us in the future but at the same time like it's kind of nice to just for me, I like being calculated and, and thinking of logic. And I talk to Ian a lot about the logic of life and like thinking of things that make sense in a, in a very straightforward, even a baby step manner, you know, just that you do this so that this happens. And then once you realize that you learn from that and use that to do the next step. And if you continue to do that, uh, you know, it, it ends up like bringing you to a place like Jeff's house where I I'm surrounded by, seven snowmobiles and access to all types of filmers access to pillow zones uh big power drops like like big kickers uh right outside of my house where i don't even have to get in the car so that like obviously was a smart choice going from last year kind of riding with my friends and 
having to really, really focus. If I wanted to get something done, I had to make it happen or if nobody was motivated around to do it. So, and that's kind of like, I mean, that's always snowboarding. That's kind of like, you're always dealing with that. Finding motivation, even for, you know, yourself is like, how do I get stoked to do this? I'm, I'm scared or I'm, I'm scared to make the move. You did. I called you up that morning. We were going to drive across the country. This is the 10th drive I've done the 60th flight probably. And I'm like, can I do this again? How do I, you know, how am I going to do this? Is this going to, why, why am I, why am I doing this? And you were super transparent about it too. I mean, I, I, I was I getting concerned because we had a time to go and then it was like, okay, that time's not happening. Yeah. But I then, changed it a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad once, that you were But once I talked to you, you were just like, this is what's going on. There's an issue with the car paperwork. I was to say that to yeah, you. Issue like, with, there's an issue with family and girlfriends mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and I'm feeling like emotional. Mm-hmm. And Girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> Can you scratch that part right word. there with the S's? Yeah, all well, the S's that you, you had had multiple girlfriends? No, 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 girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. It was girlfriend. Girlfriend, but, girlfriend. Yeah. girlfriend. Thank you. Ian. But you were like fully transparent <laughs> about it. You were just like, this is where I am. And, yeah. and a lot of people in that situation, I think, would just be like, oh, no call, no text. Like, this isn't happening, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was about to just bail out on it. Because in the thing was, it was so beautiful in Virginia. And every time I come home to Virginia on the East Coast, I get really nostalgic and uh calm is there's a calming thing that happens when i see virginia especially when it's like beautiful like it was in october and it's it's hard to leave that you know being gone from uh my my home for the past 10 years and and traveling back to virginia every so often to see my parents as much as i want to say it's not really changing because it it, you know it's always the same home and i've been lucky for that but uh and, and my parents are together but it changes every time you know, my sister's older. I missed, I didn't even realize I missed my sister's entire from 10 to 21. I've basically not been there. Wow. And I, I say hi and I know her, but I had no idea that she was going through all these things and basically became a, an only child and had brothers, had cool brothers, had brothers that could have, you know, inspired her hopefully. But I guess that's life, you know, and it's, everybody needs their time to like, explore their own their selves i'm now i'm realizing i'm she's privileged to be able to start it at a younger age yeah i it took me being an identical twin till 23 24 to realize that i wasn't an individual in any way so i was like what that was such a like a oh, chaotic mind fuck Can, crazy and it, i'll just give you my perspective on that from the time we spent together in the car i little known to most people out here i host a podcast i'm really leaning more towards the introvert side mm-hmm. like i could have gone on that whole road trip and said like <laughs> 20 words to you and been, it would have been equally as cool like for me it would have been fine yeah but we rode together for i think 10 hours or so that first day and talked the, the whole end, time at the right. end my, my throat was sore right we were losing our voice and i was i was like nick i've never talked that to anybody this much in my life my <laughs> wife's over there like you talk to somebody that much she's <laughs> laughing <laughs> yeah yeah we but talked. It was great. It's be, I think it was in part because of what you just said. Like you weren't a whole person. You've always had this other person, your brother Chris, to bounce. To justify things, too. Well, they have these two different pieces of things yeah. that you take care of. Like you do these things, Chris does the other, and you guys communicate verbally yeah. on, on what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, that that, uh, that was an interesting thing that I didn't realize I was going to have to go through. Because I always thought I was, excuse me, I always thought I was so lucky to... You know, I knew that I was lucky. I was stoked on being that lucky, but I didn't realize that like that luck may run out. Like of always being, knowing that you had somebody there next to you that you could rely on every single day. All the memories I've ever had, all the baseball games, all of the, all the team events, the football, baseball, school. Now we didn't have the same classes in school. However, because of our, our talkative nature and just what we were involved in, I think that a lot of people ended up knowing us. Separate them. And yeah, they separated us hopefully, but honestly, people, it's human nature. They go, you look alike. You guys have the same skill. You know each other. Uh, let's group you together. So that actually kind of, I've realized now became the hindrance in our life was that we were kind of forced into that, like without even really knowing it, we agreed because obviously who else am I going to choose? He's already there. It's my brother. It's my yeah. twin brother. Yeah, you know? yeah. I love him. And that became bad once it was like, the snowboarding shit, the you know, twins, the twins, the mm. who's better. I, that question right there is the worst question we ever got asked. Who was better? Oh, wow. How do you answer that? Why would you answer that? Cause 
it, when as soon as it comes down to it, you do not care what they're even asking for or thinking. You're like, I don't want to hurt him. Or, and he's thinking, I don't want to hurt him. So with that, that clash of, but you know, you're like in this thing. And, and the thing is, it's not like this happens like once or twice in my life. Cause it's like a couple hundred times I've been asked that question oh, by yeah. random people, girlfriends or, or any, anybody at the grocery made, store, probably at the yeah. grocery store. And it's a very casual thing for people to just overlook about. Well, they're not things. thinking the impact. Of they the don't think they're judging you. They don't realize that they're like, and, the, and so there's and two of you. You're pretty much the same. Which one? Which one I got paid? Which one to? do I like? Which, which one do one, I like? Which one's which, cool? <laughs> which one's cool? <laughs> which one's which yeah. one's a douche and which one's cool? How do we figure this out? <laughs> He's a fucking scumbag. Like yeah, this. <laughs> this guy. Uh, no. You know, so uh, it leaves a lot of room for maybe. I don't want to say resentment because it's not like you can resent somebody for something they didn't choose to do. However, I think that it is a very. Uh, just like unbeneficial in the relationship that we could have had or that I would like to have now. Cause now the best part that we have is not talking or te- just texting. If I text, we're cool. I can say anything. I could be like, yo, you should, did you see what I did today at seven Springs? And he would be like, talk yo, dude, that's wild. Did you see the surfing here? Let me send you a picture of surfing or some, you know, kind of thing that he's talking about. And if we were to call, it could get weird. If we were in person, there would be a, a hierarchy where Chris starts to kind of, I, I, cause I, I love my brother, but we, I, and I will say this, he is my older brother, even though we're identical twins. He's the, he's the one that had the, he's the one that had the, uh, the ability to kind of like hold his emotion in, which I think is a maturity thing. So, or at least it comes off to most people as a maturity He's got that thing. how many minutes on you? I'm two minutes older than him, minute and a half older than him. So okay. technically I'm the older one. Okay. But you're we're, saying in, in the, in, in, in the role, in, in the role of our, yeah, in the role yeah. of our lives, in the relationship of our, our twinship, you know, I'm the younger brother and I feel that way, you know, he's already talking about, he, he would like, he's looking at, you know, thinking of getting married and I'm still here snowboarding and jumping off of things and risking it, you know? So like definitely a different way of looking at what we are same lives we yeah. did everything the same but then Up until how long the ago? shadow uh maybe three and a half three and a half years we've been separated okay and that's yeah it's tell me i've separated like a uh, marriage yeah <laughs> and it hurts <laughs> just as bad yeah it's like seeing it's like seeing a ghost in a sense you're like i know you i can talk to you you're my friend you're my brother but and when it really comes down to it we're still there for each other okay. however we're not even, I, I can't even be around you really. It's just different. A lot. It's It'll just take different. time. I think we'll be yeah. good at one point, but. It was so different. interesting for me so. to hear you as we were talking leading up to this trip. And one of the things you would say consciously or subconsciously, I don't know, is I've never done this alone before. I've never done this by myself before. Like I've always had yeah. my brother or something. And, and I'm thinking like, that's a non-issue, dude. I'll fucking drive anywhere by myself. Like I'm down. Let's, let's get it. Right. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I guess you're and right. it's just, a, you know, you hear somebody else's thing that's a, a, a block in their mind. Mm-hmm. And just not being in their shoes for me, I'm like, that's that's not an issue. Like, what? That's right. in your mind. That wasn't right. wasn't a problem at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a learning experience. That's the that's to say the least. But I think it's a good thing that I'm learning it, and it and I even especially even with this podcast, you know, being it having the ability to kind of like explain a side of uh, just life in general. It has nothing to do with snowboarding. Just a life of. A lot of people go through their lives and may feel lonely and they don't admit it. You'll know me as a very open person. So I admit a lot of things. I just kind of, you know, maybe it's word vomit. <laughs> I hope it's not too obnoxious sometimes, but I always I end up saying sorry a lot, I feel. But um, I think that ever, what were you say? Oh, I was just, but did you like try to when you guys kind of separated and start doing your own thing? Did you try to look for someone else? To, like I want to say fill girls, that girls uh, girls lot. stupid I hate to say that you know yeah. but I would definitely again honest uh, and in, in a way because that intimacy is like something that my brother and I we have the type of intimacy that and it, it obviously it's nothing sexual it's like knowing somebody so well that you I, I don't know how to describe it you know everything just by sure. a just by one quick corner of the eye glance you know what the night you know what's happening wow. everything you need to know and all the important stuff. And uh, you can only find that, I think, wh- at least what I found, uh, sometimes in really, really close friends. But a lot of times people look out for themselves. And that's okay. That's human nature. I'm cool with that. But I understand that. But with the opposite sex and you're talking about relationships like that and that type of intimacy, I think that 
that has been something um, that I th I have thought to use as masking my problem. And my problem is just learning to, what I've found is just to be okay with being you or whatever that is. You know, if you mess up something, only you're, you really, you're the one that's saying the problem, you know, you're calling it the problem. It's, it's a good thing, really. Yeah. As long as you didn't get really fucked up in the fall of the crash or whatever it is, yeah. you know, I relate a lot of things to the snowboarding for me, but as long as you didn't die, you know, then it should technically make you a little better. You did learn something. Try to figure out what that little point was, you know, you're obviously still here and you can try that again. So make a better choice the next time. Or if it is really good, replicate that, you know, figure out how to replicate that, you know, make a note of it is what I'm saying. A lot of people don't are not cognitive in, in their, in their like decision making. Dude, they're getting gas it. on the trip and you're like taking notes. Like, right. What are you doing? Oh, I, I document everything. I need to know how much it cost me to get across country this time. I'm like, that's way too organized. <laughs> and I feel like I'm super. Is that like, budget? Unorganized. Like you have a travel budget or like just. No, like, it has no, you just no want real to know? purpose. I specifically want to know so that. Because to me, here's the funny thing is I hate money. I really don't think it has. It's an interesting concept. To have it, I understand why we have it. But if I took a hundred dollar bill here and burned it, everybody'd be like, "Oh my god, that's like we could use that." And it's like this really only because we say it can do something does something. If I burn it, it does, we can't eat it. We can't we can't roll a joint out of it. We can't we, we hmm. can't do anything actually with it. But if I were to I rip it up can. right now, somebody would. You think you can roll DJ it? wants to. You can roll it. This could be this could be a YouTube he just wants video to challenge. It. Like, yo, can anybody listening? Oh, cannot. Man. Don't do it. Can There's roll too up. much paint and coloring in there. Don't do it. Yeah. Try it. No, 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 no. It's, a, it's just uh, you know. Again, logic. Later, brother. Again. Later. I'll see you guys. Bye, Quentin. Uh, cool. Later. See you, bye. Later. Have a good night. Drive safe. You know, again, using <laughs> logic, anywhere. I just think that that would be a bad idea. We we had a conversation on the phone. Yesterday or the day before, I don't remember, but about the Instagram, about Instagram, or, yeah. and, and it's the same sort of thing where you said earlier about okay, let me do this step to get to this step and that step, and mm -hmm. you've gone There's in. There's a process. And, yeah, you've like decoded the the Instagram yeah. algorithm as it stands right now, at least to as some it extent. Right now. Sure, yeah, sure. to some extent. And it doesn't. It's not a foolproof kind of thing, but I think that at least being aware of like like and me and Ian talk about this a lot because we're always in the social media. And which, which by the way, Ian media. just blew my mind on the same. Point because he, he can tell like where the footage came from, like what kind of phone it is oh, yeah, by the way. It turned. Or Could you explain uh, that a little bit? I mean, you know, there's like a lens flare, or you see like some flickering in the footage, and sometimes you can tell just pretty quickly, like, oh, that was an iPhone clip, or you know, someone used professional equipment to get that shot. But I mean, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what the video is of, you know, because you can get a sick shot with any gear you have. And it's not necessarily about the gear you the have content. at the end of the day. Yeah. It's about what's in it. It's about, is it good uh, snowboarding? Is it something fun? Does it make you want to ride? Does it make you want to snowboard? That's what I've started to do is it is if you're going to show a part of snowboarding, make it so like, even if it's, it's not that hard, honestly, most stuff that's not that hard is going to be the stuff that gets more appreciation. And I'm not talking about likes. I'm talking about people actually, I don't care if you like it or not. I want someone like press the like button on it. If you saw it and you went, Man, that made me want front three. That to me is what snowboarding is. I see you in person do a front three and it makes me want to do a front three. If I see, uh, Scott Stevens do a nose press back three on his little, on his snowboard, then, and that makes me want to try something like that. That's snowboarding. That's, that's all it is. It's and just that's part of what you figured out is inspiration that... in every moment. And it if you can communicate that on Instagram, somebody watches it again. Then you can be successful. They're spending more time on this piece of content. They're not just thumbing and scrolling through. Right. They're All watching it once, yeah. twice, three times, four times, commenting on it, passing it off to a friend and going, man, don't you wish we could ride like this? Yo, I think we could ride like this. Yo, I ride that resort. That's That jump I've seen, that, that seems like something that is very possible for me to do. Any of the comments that I've gotten like that. This makes me want to snowboard. It makes me want to snowboard. You see that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. From a lot of different people that it's like, dude, this just makes me want to snowboard, you know? And that to me is a different type of appreciation. That's not just a, I liked your photo because you got cool colors. That's a nice butt. That's a nice piece of food. That's a nice thing here. Blah, blah, blah. Nice I like butt. 1080s. Blah. <laughs> it's like, I like 1080s. whoa, I want to go ride there. That made me yeah. feel like I was, you, it, was it was almost virtual reality for a split second. I was there.
And that's why I like the POV point of, you know, point of view camera yeah. shot. And I don't care if you like it or not or anything. Yeah, I haters. do it just, I don't, I don't care if you hate it or, or if you like it. I really don't care either way. It's, it's like, it's just snowboarding. I mean, Weird. if you want to see a 360 from the outside angle or from the inside angle, it's just snowboarding. When so, did you start doing that and why? Um, started doing it last year. Right in the beginning, I got this idea. You know, I've always liked Humphreys and we've always been friends and I've always seen, Tim's videos with the GoPro and they're like definitely on a different level of what you normally see GoPro footage. It's always crap. Uh, most people just, <laughs> and that's not because on? That's I always see the kid at Liberty and I'm like, Oh Here's God, we're going to see this on YouTube. Crap. And it's like two hours. Filming is hard. I don't care who you are. Filming is hard. Mm-hmm. Filming is hard when you're good. So if you aren't good or you have no knowledge of what you're doing, then it's going to be damn near impossible to make a video that looks like that Mm -hmm. so my idea was you know i love humphreys i love all of the stuff that he's done and uh i figured i've dealt with enough enough uh bullshit with like filmers and like always struggling to like get filmers paid or like and i I love ian he is a great filmer but uh you you film with people and then you get them paid for something and they take extra long to get it done they still need a lot of your creative input on it and then when it comes down to it they get paid are allowed to bitch about it and you're the one that gets in trouble for it being like you're the one that gets at least you know uh not reprimanded this is again this is snowboarding it's like what are they gonna do you know not give you another jacket or some shit like come on (laughs) but when it really comes down to it like for me personally i've gone through enough stuff with people to just you know and just getting made fun of or not get it like if somebody's going to laugh at you for having a camera on, it's like, well, have you ever filmed before? Because if you're one of the people that has filmed before, you've asked somebody to film you. It, You're asking another mm-hmm. dude to film you as a dude. What are, you, <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, come on. Like, we're all just snowboarding. And, and that's the whole thing is, like, I want to show snowboarding in a way that, like, not many other people show it. So this is a kind of cool way to, like, through Instagram with the right cover shot and the right key little – easy said things just to make it like obvious for people what's going on. I think the more obvious it is to somebody that's what's about to happen. For example, that powder uh, POV of the, of the powdered uh, pillow, pillow drops. And, and just to give like the numbers, it's like, obvious. Nick sent me a clip. I posted it to my shred souls account and wrote something like Nick Geeson's POV or something like that. Powder got a couple pillow. thousand views. Like, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's great. Nick posted it three weeks later <laughs> Different cover shot, mm-hmm. totally different verbiage, some different things in it. You can go on the Shred Souls Instagram and look at it, and exponentially more views, 30,000, 40,000 or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, the I think number ended but... up being like 56. Okay, yeah, so insane. So that one did wow. really, really well. Insane. And that's you get on cool. a popular page? I think a lot of those do. Yeah, yeah. a lot of those videos. I, he said that he saw one of the videos that I posted on the yeah. popular page. So I would see like... Stuff gets reposted. Do you send that to I them? get a lot of stuff reposted. Uh, I send just... stuff to my sponsors a handful of times, but it's gotten to the point now that people... But not even sponsors. It. Like oh, yeah. Other no, shit. I get like a lot other, of other things. Like, those just be, like, Instagram accounts that are just, like... Yeah. S- just clips of snowboarding. Well, that... and No see, credit. No... Sometimes there's credit. credit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes there's credit. I've, yeah. gotten, I've gotten credit for, like, some of those. And I see you get that credit. Yeah. And but I mean, it's stuff Honestly, that... it's so many times I can't even... Ch- I, I couldn't check yeah. which ones were... It doesn't matter. I mean, Honestly, if I put the video out there, it shows you. It's cool. I don't yeah. care if they put my name on it or not. I don't care. It's just footage. If I put my video out and my video was out there, I don't care if it even got that many views. I think it's because that's the whole thing. I didn't put out videos a whole bunch in the beginning to get a lot of views. The first fifty to a hundred videos I got didn't get a lot of views. You know, they they weren't that cool. That's you know, so they're important just to say. I mean, for someone who's trying to do this, you know, oh, you, it you didn't kept, take. You kept I didn't doing put three videos out, and the third video was like. A banger, uh, you know. It took so <laughs> many tries just to get a uh, a clip to look number one the right way. And the cool thing I bring up Humphreys because he's been in my my life in a couple pivotal moments. And uh, I guess the after the Japan moment, which if we ever want to we'll, go into that, oh, later. we'll get to that for sure. But not at this moment. But uh, he has given me a little quick advices, like like uh, pieces of advice and pieces of like information that he has. It's all experience, and it's so stupid to say, but like taking the camera up a speci- to a, a you know a specific angle and and really being um, aware of what that shot is going to look like. If it takes you know putting it on there, cutting it on, walk, you know doing a couple of things, grabbing your board while you're just stationary, and then taking it off and watching 
what it actually looked like. That is worth that is definitely worth doing what most people do is put that on their head sloppy, not press record or on and just drop in and hit the jump. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's, uh, uh, this is what I'm dealing with filmers when I'm like, all right, we're ready. Let's drop. I've been waiting. The sun's here. And then they don't press record. That's so, happened to you? Oh, all the time. Dude. Professional all filmers? The freaking time. Not Ian Mason. No, I won't drop any Mason. No, I can I didn't guess. Miss I didn't miss the shot. Wants. I didn't miss the shot. I can guess. Ian did not miss the shot. Ian is very, very appropriate. Me and I've him missed text. a couple, though. We I, text. I think it's ignorant and to, we to talk. say you don't. If it takes time, I why do you have a phone? I said today, please do a 1080. Holy. And uh, and he did a 1080 next hit. So it's like, that come on. Out. Nice. I, I got to see this. I mean, you taught me so much. We stopped to skate at Kansas City Yeah. on the way there. And I filmed you, and you're like, First thing, just you gave me like a gentle push, like maybe stand over here. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, he knows. He's, you know, all right. Perfect kickflip. I'm like, all right, we got it. You look at it, and you're like, no, let me do it again. I'm like, what are you talking about? Do it again. Well, you get over here a little bit more. I'm going to catch it a little bit better, and and we're going to put this together in an edit. And you had this picture of what the whole trip looked like, right? On that very first skate spot that we went to, yeah. And then I saw you go to other spots where there was like pool coping, and you would zoom up on it, and film it real quick, and be like, okay, this is going to look like this. I'm going to do this. We're going to get this from two or three angles. Yeah, I'm like, what do you? It's an iPhone film. We're gonna get it from two or three angles. He's like, yeah, yeah. You saw the whole video. I'm just thinking about let's get this trip. I'm trying to see it. I don't think I ever actually see it. Um, you never really do until you press export. But uh, and even then, you gotta redo it a lot of times because mm-hmm. you realize that, like I found today, you know, Instagram changed a thing. I try to upload a, vo- a video and it didn't have the sound on. You know, right. so that's a little thing. I was like, you had to make sure that you actually cut the sound on before you share it or it will keep the sound off and i'm like mm. i don't know this I've been noticing i did it twice i was like what the fuck are we doing here come on am i an idiot like come on and uh so it's little things like that like being aware of like that's why i say dealing with footage and, and always cutting the camera on now i'm usually dealing with it's my snowboarding and then a filmer's whole perspective on what he sees as the video and not in, not maybe usually including what I'm thinking about in my snowboarding. So it's kind of cool now to think of a trick and how I want it to look and what I want to do with my – even if it's just simple and it's just a stupid POV. You know, I do a little – a specific grab or something and then I rewatch it on the lift. That hypes me up. I can instantly upload it to iMovie on my phone and just slow motion and just, see it, you know, go, that's what the jump looked like? Oh, is that was me? Holy shit. Okay, yeah, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to do it again. All right, here we go. And I get back up to the top, and then I go through the whole process again. And What is your normal replicate. turnaround time until you have that, if your finished product is, say, going to be an Instagram edit? Is this like a daily thing? Like, I, I did this during the day, and I'm going to have it up at night? Or It is, depending on the situations. Being back here, I have so many people that I need to see and so many things that I need to do. Um, I can't really edit, or I'm I can't be creative enough. Like... That was what was cool about today, for example, um, was the first day I've been able to actually do snowboarding, make an edit, export it, put it on, make an edit, and then upload it because uh, it was all – we waited all freaking day to be able to hit the jumps the right way. And then all of a sudden, they're, they're really good and they're feeling nice. So I get, I get back-to-back spins and I feel really, really happy about it. I'm like, oh, man. I look at the shot and I'm like, just to make sure it's squared up. And I'm like, oh, perfect. That right there – is a more rare thing just because you know we waited all day just to get the that 30 second clip you know to get that one thing and all day that all day is actually it started from last week you know we were trying to get shots from this thing last week so i had to drive up twice up here which is almost a four-hour drive you know so that sounds like an alaska window you know right it kind of almost is well it kind of is because every time we get a shot when it's shadowy i here's the thing i already did the tricks last week and it was in flat light the jumps look half the size they look not smooth it's just you know Mm. little things that you want to be don't want to be particular on if you can do it pretty consistently you can be particular on it you know so i can i can go up and do the tricks more but um it's not even worth it now if it's not blue skies because it's not about the trick now. It's about making the shot look good. I'm not worried about landing the trick, you know, as much as making sure that he's there that day. That uh, the it's that the jumps are open. I got here Thursday, thought the jumps were open, and they were all crushed. They were remaking the jumps. So like, mm. 
six, you know, four days of 60 degrees, you have to rebuild jumps. Yeah. They completely just, rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no it's fall. New no jump. fall to seven springs. They're doing an amazing job. Oh, they're killing it. Yeah. Dude, seven but springs. There's a reason I come here. They're yeah. They're sick. You For know? sure. They have some of the best jumps on the East Coast by far. But still, I mean, that, big. <laughs> that turnaround time, even if it's like you're back home and you're distracted because you have family or whatever, it's three days maybe. Oh, If you gosh. go and film with Sorry, somebody. Sorry, yeah, I just went ranting. No, my but bad. that's yeah, all good. Yeah, no, two it's and a half, three days maybe. If you go and film with somebody, The only it's... time I'll hold it is if I have, say, like a really banger thing that's going to be like one or two quick clips. And then I have something else that's like five or six smaller clips, but I want to do it in a creative way with a cool mm-hmm. song or something, you know, so I can kind of fade that one off to just be a little, it's less relevant to a time frame to like being, this was today, a powder day. It's just like, Hey, we went snowboarding last week. Whereas today it was like, this is, it was this temperature, beautiful bluebird skies hitting jumps. And this is what it looked like in an, un, in a relatively raw, consistent clip. Yeah. It's slow mode or whatever it is, but it's, just one straight clip. And you're doing this in iMovie on your phone? For, uh, for easy clips like that, yeah, yeah. For clips like that where it's very minuscule, the amount of editing, uh, yeah, because it's only four chops. The front and the back of the slow-mo of the clip, front and the back of the next jump, and so, so it's only two slow-mo spots, so it's really easy, you know. It seems like it would be easy for everybody, but I don't, I don't know. I guess not a lot of people think about it like that, I guess, um, or they just don't want to... I guess film themselves or it's dealing with another filmer that has other jobs and stuff like that. So. You have some video editing in the family though. Yeah. Uh, my dad uh, started out editing with a, with a, with a friend of his and they started a company called Telemedia Productions and that was in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And he was an editor for them and filmer or shooter for, doing, you know, car commercials, reality commercials, any type of local business. And the company spread to most of the mid Atlantic and then he was never made a partner. So he ended up be starting his own company in 2000. And that's where like me and my brother got to be in a lot of like little commercials and stuff as kids. So we were always behind the camera. Uh, he always told us to edit. He always tried to teach me to edit, but, and I love my dad. I think he's actually really, really smart with it. But I think that, he was never very good at teaching. And that's another thing about just in general, like people that are like passionate about stuff, just because you're really good at it doesn't mean that you can teach somebody how to do it. My you know wife's I mean? glaring at me right now. <laughs> Why? Well, has this story from the, just over the weekend where we were taking um, a friend who's going to be here tomorrow, I think, and his girlfriend up snowboarding. And it's always the classic story of how I, I couldn't teach her how to ollie. I was like, I don't know. I just do it. On a skateboard. But it wasn't because I was being a dick. It's because right. I never thought about actually. the process. You told me about some never things Never thought like about this. the process. I watched people do it, and I'm like, I learned this visual thing where, they're, okay, they're jumping and moving their foot up, but I didn't think, jump and move your foot up. I didn't think, right. break it down into these steps. Right. So for me, it was like, well, you go like this. You know, you, you do it like yeah, this. Yeah, you go like this. Here, watch me. Yeah. That's, that's the famous line. <laughs> watch me. That's the skateboarder snowboarder line. Watch me. Yeah. I'm really good at this. I've spent umpteen million hours trying this but i know you've only thought about it for today so let's see if you can crooked grind this rail <laughs> and so like, what is an ollie oh shit you know so i don't know i wonder if that because like such a feeling like if you're do, learning on your own well, it depends on how like, you learn some people learn visually, well, you break some it. people learn yeah. by being told and shown yeah. and uh some people learn by analytically breaking it down you know and yeah. Or a combination of, of both or a combination of like a lot of things, you know. So sometimes it could be like connecting with the right, like some, somebody maybe need to see you do it or then like, you know, someone In like some you ways maybe. it can help. For me, yeah. if I just see you, I got enough ability that if I see you do the trick that I want to do, if I really wanted to put it down, I'll take it. I could watch what you do, analyze it, and then figure out how to do the trick. <laughs> sure. you know? stick it and, and that's how all the good, that's how anybody that's like doing hard tricks is doing it really yeah whether they admit it or not some people are not aware to what they are actually doing even though if you actually were to talk to them and break it down and and make them aware they would agree with you they'd be like oh yeah i watched him do it then i saw him take off a foot and a half to the left of the rail on his toe edge and he popped yeah. the specifics become very intricate if if looked at intricately otherwise they become pretty bland and it's just like all right here i'm just gonna carve in 
no specific amount of cars. I'm just going to be any amount away from the rail or possibly two inches away and clip my tail, but I don't know. And I'm just going <laughs> to do. And sure, that happens a lot. I see people do back sevens off of like decent sized jumps or not decent sized, but you know, maybe like small, like 25, 30 feet. Okay. And then, you know, normal park jump yeah. and they go up and it's the sketchiest thing you've ever seen. And they land it and they're hyped. And you're like, these people are boring. <laughs> Boreals, Boreals yeah. see a lot of times. You, I see you got lucky. You didn't. Way. That was, you know. I see take people time. chuck carcass sometimes. Okay. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. Really Whoa. Oh, yeah. 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 There was no one can be done two ways. Hot what was spot on a holiday so. weekend? Ooh, for people on a holiday weekend, just stand on the, the, the jump, the jump knuckle, and just watch the Jerry's. It's what was the it's MMA scary. fighter at Liberty that would like? But it's entertaining. Snowboard. No, I not saw MMA Elliot. He, there he was, was some like, dude that would like from charge, charge, charge oh. into it, and he would just like just throw himself shorter, into, almost like his name was, uh, tackle someone. Col- 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 Colton, yeah. Colton, but I, I see beast. like thinking. I think of people like that where it's mm-hmm. like, wow, like how'd you survive that? How did you yeah. get away? And yeah. I, I think of all the stuff that I've done. I'm like. I get away, but I, like, am aware of the moment. I'm like, oh, I'm about to back seven, whip it to nine, you know, and I get away with that, and I can yeah. butt check or, like, but I see other people, like, deck it as hard as you can, like, by eight feet. They don't even clear it, and it's a 60-foot jump. And I'm like, well, first of all, what were you thinking? You didn't <laughs> sideslip the jump. You didn't ask anybody any Those questions. You didn't watch the lines. You That's didn't... not cool, man. Well, it's just, I don't care. I mean, it's just, like, scary. It's just, like, scary. Yeah, get out of here. Just, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen, calling me out get out of them. <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen you like so comfortable. Like I was riding the lift, and you like hit the last jump at Boreal, and like we're doing three sixty, and someone was like on the lip, and you're like, "Oh, what up, Sam?" Like you, <laughs> right. you like three sixty and right. wave at them. You're like, "Oh, what up, man?" Right. And like in the big scheme of things, it's a mellow jumping. Isn't that yeah. gnarly? The things that make it gnarly are conditions. You know, like. Right. Uh, inconsistent like it being uh really sticky or really firm or really salted or extra extra poppy or there's a cat track in the center so you have some bumps going into it so normally where you'd be able to take a really big s hourglass turn Mm -hmm. on the jump like you see the traditional Mm -hmm. hourglass turn uh it becomes bumpy where you have to take off on only the right side whether you're spinning front side or back side and you have to kind of take it almost straight so you get like Mm. that s turn is like this wide instead of 15 feet wide it's like six feet wide or mm-hmm. three feet wide it's like woo, woo, straight off the jump that's kind of how it was today where you kind of wanted to like just be like precise and pinpointed otherwise you could either overshoot it or knuckle it like that do you have like a trick list in your head when you go snowboarding yeah for sure do it's usually you? a mellow list but back um, seven is always there because it's a good yeah. test jump um, I can I can always like when you ride I can always see you like doing like going through steps mm-hmm, every mm-hmm. day. Like, well, I warm up. I'm not gonna this. warm up with a back ten and then go do a back three. Sure, that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Sure. You know what I mean? But so, there's like, some people that like <laughs> just they just go out and try. I like could if I wanted to. If I wanted yeah, to go up, but I don't think they have longevity. I think that's a problem. sure. I, it's for me. It's more more now about smart. So I need to like prove that I can get that 1080 right this second, the first thing in the morning? Yeah. Or do I know that I can, I will do it today or tomorrow or both days or whatever. I don't worry uh, about the time yeah. frame. So like, I know that I have time to do it. I know that I've already done it before usually. And then it's like, if I've never hit the jump, what do I need to do? Either a back three, if it's really big or so, or no, if it's like a medium size, I can just do a back three. If it's really, really big, you definitely want a back seven if you're going to hit it. Sure. Um, Personally, because if you know the speeds of like normal 60 foot jumps, you always know the speed of normal 60 foot jumps. For me, it's, it's kind of embedded in my heart. You know, I know that like, you know, for example, when you're going into a 10 foot jump, does your heart and adrenaline freak out? No. But when you're going into bigger maybe jumps, maybe, 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 yeah, <laughs> certain, maybe like, Guilty. going into it, you know, going into a 65, 70 foot jump, I get this certain type of feeling mm-hmm. and it, it's, I guess it's adrenaline kind of kicking in, but I think it allows me and uh, probably a lot of riders to uh, be able to like be really, really aware of how mm-hmm. fast they're actually going. You know, some people are like, God, you're going so fast off that. But when you're actually doing it really well, it seems pretty slow. It seems pretty manageable, pretty obvious, really. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, it must be so dizzying to do a double cork or a double back or whatever. But it isn't. It isn't that 
it isn't dizzying at all. A lot of times if you do it perfect, it feels like a straight air. You know, you do a back 10 perfect and it's like, boom, oh, I'm there. I did it. Yeah. It already happened. Everything that I ever needed to do about that is in the past and I've got it. So that's like a really, really cool feeling about snowboarding that happens instantaneously. So the trick list comes into play to allow those things to happen safely. Because the back 10 fall, you knuckle that on your toe edge, face down. Fire like horrible. Yeah. And I've considered a pretty safe and easy trick, you know? Right. So I don't know. But when did, when did you first snowboard? Start snowboarding? Mm-hmm. I started snowboarding. I'm 28. Um, I started snowboarding when I was end of my 11, 11 years old. So like 11 or 12, kind of like the relative average of a lot of people, I think. Started um, with your brother? Started, well, I kind of was like more into the idea first, but uh, skateboarding really is what we started first. Yeah. Um, I begged for a skateboard. It Did just, you get one? We got one. We got one from TJ Maxx. Just one? Like you had to share it? Black and white had a yin-yang. <laughs> oh. yin, yin and yang. Was it plastic or wood? It, it was regular. It was real, oh. real skateboard. And uh, no, I mean, not like a real deal, but it had trucks and wheels and everything. You could kick, flip it, do whatever you want. And uh, me and Chris would go back and forth with it. So he'd try to shove it. I'd try to shove it. I'd try an ollie. He'd try an ollie. And we watched Jeremy Ray, uh, <laughs> old pro skateboarder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he ollied the water tower. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, he also a uh, big, big flat four that's out in front of this, like an LA spot, but, um, uh, really, yeah, really yeah. famous long Ollie, yeah. but he, wait, did Wallenberg? This, not Wallenberg, not Wallenberg, not Wallenberg. It's, in it's, uh, I th- actually it might be in San Fran. It has like, it's like a stadium set. It's like one, two, three, four. And then going like this, Wallenberg. going this way, there's like other stairs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know exactly I what you're you know talking about. Yeah. Lots of people all eat as a three. Right. Oh, in, yes. San, in San Diego. I don't know. It might be in San Diego. They, I think they actually did that like. Contest that last year, yeah. the Buster Bail. The Buster Bail. Yeah. Is that yes, the one? Yes, that's the one. Oh, okay. yes, that's the one. Okay. So anyway, Jeremy. But it's Ray. in like Chula Vista, whatever. Yes, it's in Chula Vista. Yeah. Uh, or in that area. It's in yeah. it's in Southern California. I know that. Yeah. Okay. But uh he anyway, he put out a skateboarding video uh of board slide, front board, fifty fifty, lip slide. Oh, it was an instructional flip, one. Flip. It was an instructional yeah, we video. Had it mm-hmm. one Holy fuck, dude, that was the sickest video. That taught me <laughs> that taught me heel flip, shove it, front one, back one, nolly, switch ollie, switch shoves. Like every little thing. And as soon as I, that was the technicality, they showed you an overview of a skateboard deck yeah. with the feet and they would go, okay, this is an ollie. This is a heel flip. This is a kick flip. This is a tray flip. You know, this is a nollie. This is a nollie heel. This is a nollie burial flip, you know, and like, this is a crooked grind, you know, and like once you could see the overview, I could stand on a skateboard and sit there and put my feet. In that exact spot. That makes sense. Logic, right? I just got to go do what they say. Put your feet there. Make the motion and trial and error. Man, that's I, what the guy said. Trial and error. I blew it. it I had that video and we time. watched like two tricks. I was like, this is lame. Oh, <laughs> it could be so much better skateboard. It kills me. I'm like, why wouldn't you want to learn the, bit, the heel flip, kick flip, shove it, 180. Front I can do back. all that stuff, man. Right off the bat, you could do that. You, you already no, had by it. the time I saw the video, oh, by, t- by the time you saw the But then there, video. there was definitely okay. some stuff at the end where there was like I could probably could have been more humble and like learned how I was <laughs> doing. From like it my kick flip bit. suck. I probably should have watched that. Do my kick flip still suck? I feel like this <laughs> pullback thing. I can't get the. <laughs> I want the ninja, ninja flip hits. Uh, every have once you, in do you, I don't. Do you do trick tip videos? I did one or two when I. With the North Star people like eight years oh. ago, and that's about it. To it's like backflip, be riding with or for North Star, mm. or getting a pass. Never whatever. technically for them, but uh, they ended up. They did not. We ended up not riding for them. We ended up riding for Heavenly Resort for like a year or two. But um, but then I own my veil. Not at that time. No. I don't think okay. this would have been a long, while back. Oh, okay, you know, probably eight years ago. But um, they yeah they, we worked with their filmers a lot and that's kind of when I start, first started getting into filming any snowboarding. My yeah. first three years in Tahoe, I filmed like five things. I did not film yeah. in, in, in the first three compete? years. I competed. I did well with little contests, yeah. little small things, nothing big, you know. But uh, but didn't Oakley pay you like ten grand once? <laughs> oh God, that's a that's a that's a whole other story. We'll talk about that on another podcast. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, we need uh, Nick Blush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah, just starting filming with, uh, just just starting filming with like North Star and like doing those trick tips was it was an interesting uh, opportunity. I'd like to kind of do possibly. I was talking to Ian about that doing 
using the POV, probably not all POV, but being yeah. able to do the in the moment insight of a of a handful of cool snowboarding tricks. Yeah, I would, you know, I would say there's not like a good. I I don't really see good trick tip videos in skating or, or snowboard. Like a lot of times, right. like all right, man, roll and jump this much speed, do the trick. Most of the pros don't it. know how to say it. Yeah, you know, like it, I feel like you would be able to break down like it could be little hints, but like sure. um, yeah. put your body like well, you were talking about your feet, like that's huge, like the that's way you specific. position your feet. Very okay, specific. if you have your feet when you did tray flip, like. If you in if this you put your foot in a heel flip and you try a tray flip, then it's not going to work. Happen. Yeah, exactly. But if you adjust your feet over here, just little things like that. Pay, things. pay attention to that. The yes. carve, like I see people right. like carving if, into a rail to spin on. I'm like, no way. They like hella carve out. Right. They then, make this carve, and for you doing it so many times, you know that that's a very bad thing to do or very obvious of a thing not to do. It's the same with yeah. the Instagram post. I should say you posted this many things. Why would you ever post a video of say the black screen? You know, that's your cover photo is the black screen. Oh, right. or that, the yeah. cover photo is yeah. just the ground and nothing else. <laughs> that's the same as like... Most people don't even know there's a little drop-down menu where you can select Sometimes cover. I forget yeah. cover. I mean, there's so well, many. Sometimes, sometimes I forget. There's too many steps. And then, it's, many and steps. then it's out there and I'm like, so I don't want to hire someone to do it. Like, like Ian Mason. But now I... <laughs> like me. I'll do it for you. It's tough. But I, everyone's trying to do it all themselves, and that's kind of what I see going on right. with, with a lot of social media. But I see, like, like I always say Braille skateboarding. Okay. Like, yeah. Bra- you know Braille? Yep. Yep. And they started doing trick. T- I mean, they had a bunch of money from Church of Scientology, so, okay. like, that's how they got more recognition or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But, like, they did a bunch of trick tips, and kids that don't skateboard know what Braille skateboarding. Like, they ran in, like, oh, Braille, like, you know, guys know Braille, like, because they probably just, how to do a kickflip on YouTube. You know what I mean? And yeah. like they're huge. And yep. I think they could do a better job at their video. I think they could be like shorter and more impactful. But like I just I don't know. I could see you just like you already have the video. A amount of yeah. People, so it like do more tricks and do something you know. that I'd like to do. It does seem cool. I like to, I like to explain snowboarding. I like it when yeah. my favorite part is when I explain something is and somebody goes that is right there that's on that brink that hasn't heard the right thing maybe because I know when I've been on those moments when I was waiting to hear the key to the 1080 you know Mm. I had the ability but I was so scared to like I didn't understand that there was a second dive that you really once you commit to here it's all over and you got it Mm -hmm. and it was like this much of a degree of my head because I would do back tens and be like oh I'm so fucking scared to go upside down the second time when that was the safe part staying where I was was so dangerous so I Mm. went and somebody told me that I can't remember who it was but that moment you know changed me for that thing and like that's the same thing for uh, just kind of all the you know, honestly all the things we're talking about and um, just being aware and like being able to do the trick tips for me I think would be a really cool opportunity because explaining snowboarding in such a way that like I said it makes somebody's light bulb go off where they mm-hmm. go oh my god I'm probably going to get a front three in my life that was the coolest thing to <laughs> I ever can see. see how much it excites you. Yeah. That's so sick. Like yeah. to see somebody be like, holy shit, I think I might be able to backflip. Yeah. You're right. I, th- like they get hyped. I can see them getting giddy. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah dude, we're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. And you know, not always am I able to fo- you know follow through and get somebody to commit because honestly, it's it's up to them and I'm not forcing anybody in any snowboarding. I'm usually the first person to say, if you don't feel it, don't do it. There's no reason. You trying to tell me to quit? Don't quit. So high risk. <laughs> it's so, so high, far it's so right high risk, low quit. reward. It's yeah. Some people, you know? Yeah. And it's got to be like the reward's got to be. The reward's got to be for you and yeah. internal. You got to be like, I want to do backflips. I don't yeah. want somebody to go, I want to get girls if I do a backflip. You know? I want to I want to like snowboard. Like, Why yeah. do you think I do backflips? <laughs> you can check Ian's Instagram. Wants to send I, I, do I, thing he done. I haven't done He gets it. a video and he's like, I want to send this to a girl. And the hand, the hand plants are going to get you the girls. I've done right. hand plants. It, I've and, done, and, and I've it done does back, get in the girls. Just so you guys know, it does get the girls. Yeah, but. backflips the girls are like, wow, you're good. They understand. <laughs> I mean, crowd pleaser. They understand. Right, they get that. that. That's the one thing. They're like, you can see a front ten. And no like, way. A front ten. Wait, wait, that wait, looks super ballerina. They see a backflip on a ten foot little thing, and they're like, holy shit. Backflips get it done. Backflips get it done, dude. I I can confirm because Tony Hawk came to Frederick, right, and did a demo. I don't know if any of you guys did. You guys go? He amazing skating going down. The whole Birdhouse team, they're just ripping, and there's like some muted, like yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Flaps. He yeah, he does a fly out backflip onto the deck. On yeah. Then he do like a lands on his lands on his feet, not on his board. Not on his board. 
<laughs> like Everybody insane. Tony Hawk's. Yeah. What I played a video game with him, and America's now it's real life. America's flip happy. Or yeah. we used to joke about this. We were like, God, dude, flip frenzy. People were just like, they see a front flip, and it's like, oh my God, they see and a rail jam. I'm like, do you understand how easy a freaking backflip is? Yeah. That guy just did a backflip. That's way harder, honestly. Kramer, thank that's you, brother. More tactical. Hey, hey, Kramer, how's going? Leave. Who's a better snowboarder, you and your brother? Oh my god. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying it so I didn't have to. <laughs> Sorry, somebody had to ask. Somebody had to ask. Like, what are they going to say? I'm my brother's, this damn thing for an hour. My brother's be... pretty good. I'll say that. <laughs> Who's a better surfer? <laughs> Chris, by far. Later, oh, John. God, I'm a pussy. Yeah. Have a go, man. Hey, you rip. So, yeah, he's I, good. Oh, Jesus. So tell us, tell us about Japan, dude. Oh, man. That's an interesting one. Heavy uh, one. Yeah. Did, I, did anybody hear about that when I was like. I didn't yeah, found out about it until like really whispers. recently. Yeah. I had no, I, I, know, I had no idea. My brother would have known, and he would have said things to people Clive, and asked Clive about it. Did Clive told me about? when it was, I think, okay. He wasn't sure that it was okay to talk about, so right. we talked at one point, and okay. he's like, "Man, there's some heavy stuff, blah blah blah." And then yeah. he called me back like another week later, like, "Shit's still going on." Yeah. And he finally told me what, what, what have, yeah, what was yeah, really what happening. Was going on. So it's kind of like I guess it's this is one of the more personal things, you know, minus my just talking about my twinship in general, but um. I am stupid. I uh, I had an opportunity. I've been to Japan before. I went for a month with uh, my snowboard company, Five Snowboards, to help coach and also like coach a camp that we had out there, as well as you know compete, film, and uh, just in general, just enjoy just being just being there. You know, that was one of the coolest experiences of my entire life. And then a year later, we're going to do the same thing. And and uh, you know me, fucking all about consistency wanted to do the whole thing and, and, and get right back into Japan. I already knew what was going to happen. And I was seeing this girl and she, uh, she's, she's prescribed Adderall and, uh, anybody that's in the United States has probably heard of Adderall or Ritalin or anything like that. But I was, uh, dating her and I, you know, you know, I, uh, smoked weed in my life. It's, it's something that's always been a I hate to say it. It's a big part of my life. Uh, shit, I don't hate to say it. I, it's, it's, it's a part of my life, man. It's just what it is. And that's not a bad thing. But I, I decided with this girl to take Adderall. I only take it a handful of times. And then I, I decided to take three pills, three pills with me to Japan. And when I got off the 25-hour flight in Chaitos, uh, Northern Island in Japan, right below Hokkaido, I got... The customs, the customs pulled me aside as soon as they saw those pills and they, and freaked out on me. Were they in, like, what were they in? Uh, I had put them in literally loose in the top of my black diamond bag. There's a little goggle zip and I opened the goggle zip and there was just right there and they were next to an ibuprofen. Um, I had ibuprofen pills just for, you know, aspirin or whatever, but, uh, I had those three pills kind of sitting there with a watch and like a hat or some kind of random like little things and trinkets. And, uh, yeah, they freaked out on me. They pulled me into a back room. I went into an eight hour interrogation, uh, not arrested just yet, but I could tell that it was going down that route and I had no idea what that meant. So then all of a sudden I'm just surrounded by 13 officers. They've taken apart every single thing I have taken all of my money, all my, my passport, everything. And, um, freaking out on me you know this is methamphetamine that's that's what they're looking at you know this is meth and that's how they look at it and i don't have in the u.s it's prescribed to school it's children. prescribed to school children I, it's illegal for me to have Kids it anyway i made it i made a really stupid choice and i've definitely you know learned i think a lot of people could learn from that experience for sure just hearing about it but uh it kind of it shows you how america is kind of like just dumbed down to like things that other places will hang you for you know and luckily i was in japan uh where they're strict but they're not to the point where they would kill you for something like that you know like if you were in taiwan that could be years in jail you know if you have a couple eighths of weed on you you could be years in jail and that is insane that is insane I heard some of in Southeast Asia, it's like death penalty. For death that. penalty yeah. in certain spots. Yeah. Yes. If I had been, I was in Taiwan with those ba- with that value. If I had, me and Armin almost left. We had a five hour layover. Oh, connect we, or something? Yeah. In Taiwan. If we had gotten off the plane, come back, we would have had to go through customs in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. It would have been a completely different thing. So anyway, long story short, I'm going to try to get to the point, but, uh, or at least uh, to the girth of the story. But I, 
ended up sitting there thinking that I was going to get out that night and maybe get deported, which was freaking me out, or at the very least get a huge fine. And they said, we're all good. We're done with the interrogation. It's almost nine hours. Now, are they, do they have a translator? Like what's... They had a very mediocre translator. It was the first, that was the worst interrogation that I had uh, out of an overall total of about 65, 70 hours of interrogation over the uh, 27 days. God. So I guess that's not, I don't know. Honestly, it's not that, I mean, dude, people go through so much crazier stuff. I feel like, like. In the big scheme of things, I was. They fed me. They were very polite. I love the Japanese. Uh, I'm okay with their process. I think it's a little crazy, but they did what they did. What, what did idiot. they? What did they feed you? They feed you kind of. They were all worried that I wouldn't like it, but it was like you know, like little square <laughs> of fish. It wasn't a lot of food was the problem, but there's always a square of fish for the morning. You wake up at six a.m., clean your room, and then they feed you with uh, maybe two little like these like sausage wiener kind of things, and then like some pickled. Uh, vegetables of kind, but I mean, generally what we eat as Americans between all three meals that I got combined would be one decent, like a medium sized meal that we normally eat. Yeah. So over 26 days, 27 days, I probably from sweating from just being so nervous the whole time, I lost like 25 pounds and I'm skinny yeah. as it is. You know? yeah. So I was 150 to one, I was 155 to 128. So that was like just, sh- just shitty feeling. No socks, no shoes, no bed. Uh, feet got raw when I, as soon as I got out of Japan, my feet were raw because from walking around. Once I got out, because I hadn't walked around, the only thing walking I did was a eight by ten cell. Mm. So I'm sitting there for a month thinking, and I did not know I was getting out till the day I got out. Wow! From what I'd heard from the embassy, from from the American embassy, from all the Japanese lawyers that we had gotten in contact with, uh, which. They all didn't want to take the case because in Jap- in Japan, a lawyer can't just like, there's no lying for you. There's no like, hey, he's a good guy. Don't do this to him. Blah, blah, bullshit. First you know? defense or whatever. Yeah, first yeah. defense kind of thing. There is like, oh, you did a thing wrong. You're going to pay for whatever the defense is, whatever the offense is. And uh, so I had to kind of go through the whole thing. They told me six months right in the very beginning. Then they said at the very least three months. Uh, if you get out in a month, then I then that's going to be a random thing. So I ended up being luckier than a motherfucker. I uh, was just really, really overly honest. Kind of like I'm being right here. I just, I don't care. I don't care who knows what I, my life is. In the big scheme of things, when we all get to the end of your life, you're going to realize this, the stuff that was so insignificant will just be non-existent. And with that being a a truth of this world that I found, we're all going to, we're all living our own thing. And I, I can't be mad at anything that I've ever done yeah i'm bummed on certain things and i wish i could have been nicer to people on a lot of instances but with this thing with the japan i don't think it was cool but i do think it was interesting it was a wild ass dream dude it was not sleeping for a month is crazy it is a very very interesting um life experience so i'm stoked on it and on the sense that it was like I did it. I'm not dead. I, I got through it. I did not have to stay there for a year. I think that would have been insane. I would have lost my mind. But to be able to like have appreciation now, the second I got out, dude, that's when I started doing the GoPro. I got out the day, the day we got out, we got to Tahoe. <clears throat> the, oh, here's a quick funny thing. You didn't know where in Japan you were deported or something? No, I got, I never left the, I didn't go outside in Japan, dude. I was, so wait, they took you to the jail. They took me to the jail in handcuffs. To get there. So the daily. Do you know process, what they arrested you for? This like smuggling. Uh yeah, stuff? smuggling methamphetamine. Yeah, they didn't. Okay, they yeah. weren't like you weren't trying to sell it or something. Uh, no, but that's what it would have been distribution of. Uh, distribution. They were trying to make. Sure. Oh, they want like were they saying you're trying, trying to? Yeah, yeah, trying like to see if it was. Serious. They don't care. Big they don't bus, care if you three have pills. It. Big bus, three pills. Big well, bus. I had. I technically I had the ibuprofen, which was eighty six pills. And then I had oh the uh, ibuprofen. They, they was... considered that possibly something else because they said the second it. you have an, a dr- uh, drug that's not related to anything, there's no documentation of it. It's just in a baggie. Sure. Then everything else becomes uh, null and void of what it's in in this container. So it was 115 pills technically that I was. Oh being wow! Out for. So now you can see why it was more than yeah, yeah a month. I didn't know. But, they, they can test that. They so, tested it. It took two. It took technically two weeks. I think they probably had it a lot quicker, but maybe they go through a lot of other stuff. Right. I don't know. So then they were. So. so then you you spent time in jail, and because here I would say like the best advice that I hear a lot is you want to speak to a lawyer, 
and I wouldn't admit anything. They advise you not to talk to a lawyer. The American Embassy specifically said the American Embassy to do not. The American Embassy. This is a English from America speaking one. She said, "Do not." Uh, I would recommend not going for a lawyer at least right off the bat because it kind of shows that you're, especially as a foreigner, it shows that you're afraid and uh, that well, of you're course trying. You're afraid. Well, like afraid. I mean, it shows that you are trying to not be uh, truthful. It shows that you're trying to get out of it. Huh. Cultural, cultural they want difference. you to say cultural, I, cultural, cultural, difference. cultural difference. They want you to yeah, say that huge. it was mine. I did it, and I'm. I understand the responsibility. Not even that I'm sorry that in it, but definitely that you don't want to do it again, yeah. but that, um, you understand that you, that you made a mistake. You need to know that they want you to know for a fact that you made a mistake and to say that and honestly be like, I will not do that again. You know? And did, me, did you go to court are, four times? I went to support it's a, two hour drive except when there's snow so one of the things so you're getting <laughs> so you're going to <laughs> to the waist okay. to the feet yeah. in shackles with a whole thing that wraps around you and your hands are tied Gee. to your stomach you have six police officers with you you get in the van and they, then, they carry guns uh i don't think so i think they have like tasers or, they're pretty mellow honestly there's not a lot of because of their system there's not a lot of people that get in trouble there Okay. It's very, very few people that are actually in. Or you're in the Yakuza and you're like. Not you're in the cops. Yakuza. You're all covered in tats and you're a gang member. And that's yeah. obviously completely different than normal culture. So anyway, you know, it's a three. It, it, it ended up being like a three and a half, four hour drive to Sapporo. A couple of. When it was snowing out, were you like, fuck? Like it was. No, it was just like this cool dream. It was not. I don't even say dream. It was such a cool thing. I remember looking out and seeing these like old Japanese barns with like weird symbols on them. And I just was like. How cool is it? It was some of the few moments that I was like, how fucking cool is this? That I'm in, I'm not dead. They're not going to cut my head off. I'm starting to know that they're not going to be crazy to me. You know, yeah. I'm going to be locked up, but I'm in chains here in Japan. I never would have thought this moment. Well, I'll tell my grandkids. I'll tell my grandkids about this. Brought me to this moment. I wouldn't even have gone on this trip. I would have never gone to Japan if I was snowboarding. Snowboarding Snowboarding made that the Japan thing happen. I think a lot of snowboarders can say that. I think Nate Bozong. Sure, sure. sure. (laughs) Sure. 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 There's like in that category of like. There's a few people. Well, I. But now with that perspective. Oh well, yeah. Did did people reach out? Other Jake Oe. Jake Oe was in jail, and uh, at the the same time, no, the year before, the year before, and he ended up. He did three months. He did three months. So it shows how he did it. He had a baggie of coke that had. No coke in it. It was a very, uh, you know, just literally a, resi- a residual amount of, uh, of, of it in there. And he was getting asked for his passport at 7 in the morning with other riders. And he's sitting there. Uh, they were not snowboarding. They were leaving a party. And from what I co- collected from him was that the, and he told me this was that the fact that he said that he had gotten it from somebody in the party was basically them in the, the cross-reference of language difference. They were sitting there going... You're saying this is not yours? Oh, you're, you're lying, lying man. Uh, you're done. And he lied for 15 to 20 days. <laughs> and he should have stopped about day two, one. Yeah. Should have started telling that truth about day hour seven. That would have been okay-ish, probably. You could get away with that. I was. I started telling the truth in five minutes. I, just because I'm not so trying to cut it on anybody. I'm not, <laughs> well, I have no... There is no... Yeah. It's me. I said, this is me. Uh, I don't think this is a bad thing. I do know what it is. And what what what's, what are we doing here? Like, I'm gonna repeat myself until we figure out what we're doing here. Because you didn't see it, you didn't see it as a problem. Uh, you didn't know it was like breaking the law. Yeah, I. I mean, here's the fucked up part. Yes, I understand. I live in a, such a crazy world um, of my own mentality of like sure. legalities and things. But I didn't really think that that's the worst thing in the world. Like, I didn't think I was. I didn't do it to hurt anybody. I wasn't bringing it to sell. I wasn't bringing it to. So for me, thinking in my own internal yeah. selfish world, it didn't bother anybody else. You're thinking, I got and some work to do in Japan. Right. I got to focus. Yeah, I want to focus, <laughs> man. I want to fucking be on point. I mean, the I don't of- need the drug to do it. But then again, I, I made that choice to do it. So somewhere subconsciously, I said, okay with it. But I think a lot of people can relate to that maybe of just like kind of doing things. And sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes people drive drunk. That's another thing I always preach to people. Don't do that because it it's so – it's just – it's the worst thing you could ever do if it does go wrong, man. Yeah, that's I hate it's people the worst to thing. do that. I would say, like, yeah. with Adderall, like, I would never, like, tell people, like, to do any drug. But, like, sure. 
I went to college and that Adderall was just like a part of going to college. I, I didn't do call. I didn't do Adderall or whatever. But, but I had so but many you friends. That, oh, it's finals week. It. I need it. to do Adderall, and they're in the library just <laughs> and they're like, sniffing it. I'm not sniffing it. Yeah, yeah and like dude, I'm, in the no, fucking no, no. library, like every like almost smart. every smart. college student. Like, like, oh yeah, yeah, dude. Like can't believe I did it. You can but, make so much money then. Yeah, people, I missed see, out. Think about it. Oh, no, you know you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You didn't sell drugs. You never. But it was never. It was one of those things that like this is we give this to kids because they have ADD, right? And it's not. To me, not that gnarly. Like, it was just like, oh, people are doing it. Like, it probably shouldn't be, but, like, whatever. And what? that is the perspective that got me in trouble. Was it your prescription? Like, if it was your prescription? I'm just thinking... Uh, if- technically, no. If you look at the American Embassy site for Japan, it says right at the very top, do not bring Adderall of any kind into, you know, into the our country. Mm. That wouldn't have made a difference. However, it would have made a difference. It would have been, if you're like, I'm an idiot, my, this I is my have prescription. this, this is my prescription, and they would have taken it, most likely. Okay, but then they would probably uh, let They you could go. have held you for the night. They, they can do whatever they want. They, they can hold, but, They can hold you for 28 days with no reason for any kind. They have every right to hold you for sure. anything. If you look drunk on the street, they can hold you for 28 days. So... <laughs> Holy shit, if I had... I, the fucked up part is I think I knew that from last time in Japan, that not to get drunk or do anything, but I never... We had so much fun in Japan the last time, I, was, I had no idea that I was like... Sure, lots of snowboarders go and party and get really drunk in Japan. Kids to told me, bars. some of my friends <laughs> so told me that they went to Japan serious. right after me, weeks after me getting out, and they had chocolate mushrooms, they had little brownies of weed that they had brought with them. They were all smoking... Oh, I fart on the fucking... <laughs> they fucking uh they have they have like all kinds of like little uh not Adderall but I think they were taking like uh, not Oxycontin just some kind of like painkiller of Percocet, some sort. Or, something, Percocet yeah. or something just wrapped up and put in their boot fuck like, you holy fuck and the funny thing is I had friends telling me that they told those kids not to bring anything geese and just got locked out what are you doing like holy shit yeah yeah and those kids said I don't give a fuck I'm doing it and they don't Damn. get in trouble but here's the thing in the big scheme of things I'm not like mad at them I don't care it's like that's your choice yeah. I made a mistake but I'm I'm glad it happened to me I'm grateful for learning for seeing such a wild perspective of another culture that most people will never get to see of another culture like another completely 180 degrees of our life you know and that that Can is cool I don't know not, not cool but like it's just a very beneficial yeah. thing deep down I think yeah I mean I think it's sometimes it's rare for cool. us to go through like our own penal system, but and we kind of know it, but not well, not that well. We have no. I but know, in yeah. another country, like I saw the most intricate side of it. It was a page yeah. of documentation that was probably ten thousand individual single leaf papers that was this thick, over seventy hours of interrogation of the same questions in every single way you could ever answer it. They wanted me what to they, draw, they wanted me to draw the house from a top angle view where my bed is where the Adderall Your was house? on the table in Tahoe in Donner Lake at Armin and Mia's house where we walked upstairs where where my girlfriend at the time was uh-huh. where I got what the bag looked like what type of bag it was every thing that you could think of and I, I swear to God I mean to the point where I was sweating like in cha- in handcuffs the entire interview every day okay. from 9am to you know, 3 a.m., you do six or seven hours of interrogation. You eat lunch for halfway, and you eat some food, and then you go back. And, and they're just going through. What's their demeanor like? Are they angry? Are they kind Thomas, of just... really, really cool. They liked me. They liked me a lot. We okay. laughed a lot. Um, a lot of times I got off topic like we're doing here and talked about. I told them about weed in California. I told them. About come to California. Walking on farms. I talked about. Anywhere on the West Coast. I told them to come out to see me, you know. is uh, Come out to see me. Uh, I'll hook you up. Inspector Hayama and uh, Detective Uno. Detective Uno was born 1988, December 12th. Mine is November 28th, 1988. I would imagine you get pretty He's close with those guys. Yeah. Only 14 days older than me. I was 14 days older than Just my detective. Right reversal, there. Dude. Wow. And Uno is sitting there looking at me. Both 27 years old, we're like, you're a snowboarder. You're just some random fucking kid from America that's just coming out, you know, doing this. And yeah. he was a man, you know, he was a, he was a detective that had been doing this for eight years, you know, sure. he'd been, he'd been already working in the police force from like 18 right out. Bro, you know? And that to me, boys. I'm like, yeah. and for me, I'm like a little kid, you know, like I, yeah. I snowboard, I'm very free bird. And it's like, 
It was interesting. I think there was a moment when we both, once we realized that, he was like, oh, and we, like, he looked straight at me and like had this like eye to eye, like, holy shit, I don't even care that you're in this, sit- like, we're just people, huh? It was kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It was just an interesting thing. And, I, and, then, and then I became super calm in my interviews, or not interviews, interrogations with him. It was just like, it became an interview. That's what do you do? I'm a snowboarder. I'm not, I'm not lying to you, so I can tell the truth every single time we say this. Mm-hmm. You can say whatever you want. Just ask the question a hundred times. I got the same answer. So that, I think, was what proved to them that it would be ignorant to keep me in there for six months. You so know, since, like, come J- on, man. What are you doing? Since John asked the last kind of dick question, um, I'll, I'll ask the next one. Okay. When are you going back to Japan? I can't wait, dude. Soon as it, Can you uh, go back? 32 to five years. Most people get for drug charges get life. I was never charged with anything. They give me five years oh. uh, suspension. So I can go back when I'm 32. I can't wait. I really, really want to go back. I just obviously I'm going to be smart. Um, You're not going to bring Adderall. No, I'm not going to bring Adderall. I'm not going to be you know stupid. But I like, or at least put him in the ibuprofen bottle. <laughs> that you can worse. smuggle them differently. Actually, what actually, I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, number one rule. Yeah, number How many rule. can you fit up your ass? Is the question. That would have been a safety. That would have been easy. You know, could have done that. Theoretically, could have done that. Could have put it in my shoes. Could have put it in the backpack in the bottom. Could have been in my camera bag. Could have put anything. Here's the thing, though. I wasn't trying to smuggle anything. I, yeah. I wasn't trying to like do any. Kind Did of you forget they're in there? Or you you brought them? I on. knew. Uh, I do remember a blank moment of being like. Could this be bad? Yeah. But not oh, to the right. point of like doing something. About could this kill me? Yeah. Is this so bad? Like that's how I usually think, and that's what I explain to them. I say, like, dude, I snowboard. I make decisions on could this kill me? Could this fuck me up really bad? Yeah. Or do I got this? And like I said, if I'm ninety percent in there on snowboarding, I'm in. Fifty percent, fuck no. With the with the Adderall, I was like, didn't, it, there was no percentage. I didn't. I was like, oh Adderall, yes, it's it's this big. Is that gonna kill me? It's a little piece of thing that. Hmm. See ya. Didn't, did, it was it was a size thing. I was like, don't even care. I didn't even think about it, dude. Yeah. Just one second, and I went, yeah, it's dangerous. Fuck it. That's cool. It's whatever. I'm not. I'm good. Amazing. Never do that again. <laughs> anyway. So Japan was an interesting one. <laughs> we tried. We tried to do a podcast um, when we were on the road. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We tried to buzz you in via Skype, and there was just too much road noise. Um, and I think that there's like more than enough to do a whole nother podcast at some point here sure but we've kind of got to wind down if we were like losing people yeah no worries sure. yeah, I, think yeah. I think we did good <laughs> Not, like if we're like day. physically losing people it's like eleven thirty at night and people are mm-hmm. oh we got to get up and snowboard in the morning yeah yeah um, no worries that's that the plan great. yeah that's for true. sure that's but one it's of the questions deep. that's it's the hard transition <laughs> from now. from that story uh-huh. that um you know we always ask is like between skateboarding and snowboarding mm-hmm. which one do you like more I will always be a skateboarder. That is, that's the thing. That is the thing that doesn't have any real restrictions like bindings or you, you, you get, I run from cops. Like I'll still do that. I'll still run from cops right now. Like it, it gets it's instantly into a 13 year old mode of like, just what, like live right now, life or death, whatever you got to do, just do it. it you know, if it's going to, if it, if this kickflip makes you happy right now, it's, then that's like the coolest thing ever. So snowboarding rad. is a lot of limitations. Um, I can't snowboard when there's no snow. I can't snowboard well when it's really, really hot. Uh, mm. Or when there's no jumps or there's no, like it's all slushy or things are, you know, sketchy. Uh, love, love to say that you can snowboard in 10 feet of fresh snow overnight, but Tahoe's getting fucked right now. And you can't snowboard when it's that deep. Sometimes it just becomes to a point where it's just dangerous. So. Fucking traffic. I mean, you don't you don't have to drive, but God damn, go back to the bay already. Go back to the bay. Jesus. <laughs> well said, it's AJ. Uh, just learn how to drive. So, boys, I think that's a good spot to end it. Sick. Cool. Like, that was really, really fun. That was cool. Does anyone that's else have any, awesome. any yeah, final words, any Jerry Springer final thoughts or anything? God, any any yeah, shout outs yeah. to anybody you got to... Say hi to. Let's see. I got a couple random shout outs. Obviously, I talked about my twin brother a lot. So Chris Keeson is my brother and I love him a lot. So that's always that's, been a hard thing in my life. I've got to interrupt got the shout outs here yeah, because yeah. That, that's something when <laughs> we were driving, like, and I've talked about this on the podcast since, is yeah. you were not just your brother, but anyone else in your life, man or woman, otherwise, you're like, okay to say I love you with. And for me, that was a real shocking thing. 
Like that's not something like most people just say like, "Hey DJ, I love you, man." You know, you yeah. say it all the time. Well, <laughs> maybe what you say, like, <laughs> like more one. like more like when cuddling time is that when yeah. you say it more, or is it just butt rub? But, uh, <laughs> but I just found that to be like really cool, and that's your your transparency and your family piece, and that was refreshing well, for me. Like I actually, thing if I do, I do, if I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. And I'm pretty blunt with things, so. Obviously, I love my brother, and I love a lot of the people in my life. And uh, I guess going back to you know real quick, then is you know it's like all the people that have helped me get to where I'm at. You know, like the fact that I've had any people give me snowboards to be able to do it. You know, is really cool. And uh, there's a lot of you know Nick Viscani is somebody that got me on sessions last year. Riding for sessions is a really cool opportunity, seeing as how that was one of the first snowboarding kits that I got, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Clive Dickerson, who helped me get out, you know, has helped me with snowboards, traveling to Japan, traveling to Canada, traveling to Hood, traveling to uh, Colorado and back and forth across the country a handful of times uh, to just just so I can snowboard. You know, that's like, I love, you know, Clive Dickerson has been a really, really cool person. So running five snowboards and happy mitts uh, has been I, you know, I appreciate how that just randomly came into my life and has been more than just a sponsorship. So that one's a really big one for me as well. And then obviously with Shred Souls, you know, it's always been something I've been involved in in the past, you know, few years and now more recently more involved, which is really cool. You know, it gives me like more purpose in my life, I feel, and kind of an opportunity to talk uh, a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, then, uh, then I have, you know, the last thing I said, at least in sponsor wise, the people that have actually helped me snowboard, like my friends up in Oregon own a company called Mountainology Board Shop mm, and yeah. a small company, but it's, you know, those are my friends and I've, I've known these guys for a long time and from the East coast. And, uh, I think it's really cool to have friends that are up in Oregon that I can just go up and go rock climbing with and snowboard with at any time. And, uh, they, they, they like, they like snowboarding. They don't like the industry is, is, is an oblivious thing is, is they're, they understand it. They're in it, but like, they like it that, and that to me, I don't care what you do. That is, that is cool. So those are definitely people. My mom and dad are, uh, always going to be up on that list. And, uh, yeah, those are probably the, my little sister and my, my family. Those are the, those are the people that are there. They help me a lot, a bunch. So cool, man. Shout out to those people for sure. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you, everyone that's here for the podcast. This is right. This is our first live audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Audience slash participant. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> Not bad. I think we did it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank sure. you, guys. Yeah. So Podcast Camp was super fun, even though, as you heard during the episode, that we had some pretty awful conditions. I think we saw everything from 70 degrees and sunny slush to freezing rain and totally bulletproof. We made up for it by partying into the wee hours, mini golfing, and there was a serious roller skating competition. There's some pictures and video. Um, There's video of me that I'd I'd rather not that you actually saw uh, roller skating, actually, but... uh, It's posted up on the Not Snowboarding Podcast website uh, along with this episode. The plans are just starting to take shape for next year's camp. The location will be at my new home mountain, Bear Valley, California. That's not Big Bear in Southern California. Bear Valley is actually in the Lake Tahoe region, but on the west side of the pass. So in the winter, it's isolated from the other Lake Tahoe resorts as the pass is closed. Dates-wise, we're looking at the first or second week of February or the second week of March. If you have interest in attending this year and have a preference given those options, please shoot me an email to let me know what your thoughts are at nateatshredsouls.com. Until next time, peace.